So I met this gentleman just about a year and a half ago. Came into a studio where I was working then and selling this product. I thought, ah, you know, I know everybody who starts things. Are they really going to go somewhere? I'm so chuffed. Semi Mole is still in business, man. Mate, I'm like, I look at what you do now and, and I'm going to read some of the stuff. Well, but let me start about your journey. Yeah. yeah? He, he says that my entrepreneurial journey started when I was 14 years old, selling ice cream in my neighborhood in Tembisa, Gauteng. Like most township kids, I faced many challenges, including poverty, and had to share almost everything with my three other siblings. And then I'm going to fast forward. While he was studying motor engineering, I heard that uh, business uh, BMW was offering apprenticeships for students. In 1998, I was fortunate enough to be granted one. Now, you would think somebody who goes into BMW and, and gets an apprenticeship, he would stay there and drive lovely cars and stay forever. But this yeah. man, years I, later, decides I'm going to do something different. I actually did drive that car. <laughs> of course, you would have driven the car. But yeah. you know, Sammy, you then decide to go into a market that is highly contested, yeah. but also infested with, and I say infested deliberately, with highness. People who've been there for long, have owned the space, they big, they've got the money, and you come in and you say, I'm going to do this. Yeah. How I, did it happen? Look, I think for me, you've hit it on the nail when you said to me, uh, when you were reading there, about my entrepreneurial journey. Um, I grew up in an environment where most kids, so that means it links to what where I am right now. Yeah. Most companies are doing it. So there's nothing special about me. So it's about how do I project my company, my product into the market? Mm. What is it that is new that I'm bringing into the market? It's a new offering that we are you know, chasing another company in terms of competition. But at the same time, we bring value you know, to, for, for the customers so, so that they can look at the other product and measure it with our, our, our product in, in terms of value as well as uh, the taste, look and feel. Yeah. We've hit to hit those um, boxes and say, are we comfortable to release the product? And so far, the product is ticking all those boxes. Yeah. It's a, it's a one, 1 1.5 billion market. And when you think about it, well, when Cup was coming here, you think somebody would want to be in that sort of market, but everybody was thinking about the BNBs. Yeah, accommodation. You know? <laughs> no, make your house available. Not so so for me, do. I thought about people who want to sleep somewhere while they are there. They will consume a drink, yeah. whether it's alcohol or non-alcohol. So those are the two choices. That's how I started and supplying the hotels. After a while, people said we want it. Where do we find? But then how do you then introduce a brand where you already know it's literally a mass market product, uh, uh, market which is full of drinks after drinks. Fridges are full. So many fridges are drinks full. In, that, in that fridge. That, that's it. Fridges are full. But the art of, of introducing a new brand, I mean, I was just talking about uh, the gentleman that you had about Archer mm. and your colleague Porsche was asking me, what would you do with the archer? I said, I'll bring an archer on a strip because an archer, it has been sold so many times. It's everywhere, every corner of, of, of our country. But if you're introducing archer into the market, you want to bring convenience. Mm. So I will bring a strip that shows show people that you can actually put it into a bag, you can put it into your drawer, it doesn't leak. You know, whether you buy an, an archer into a big supermarket or small, they all have one problem. They it's are like greasy. Very you know? greasy. You look at it but like... Ugh. You want to introduce a product and measure it with the current market. Once you've done that, you've got a winning product. And that's how Skyroll Twist. Yeah. Was done. You, you, had, you had to match it to the specific market and say, this is yours. Correct. And what we wanted to do was... I realized that within the market, you've got a product that's already in the market, but it's selling at a higher rent value. How do you then introduce a product that is similar taste, but at the same time, you're introducing a twist of some sort? I mean, in our company, we part of our Bible, we say we twist hands when we're happy. In a normal mind, we'll be, why would you do that? Mm. You know. So we do things backwards. What is normal to you, for us, it's abnormal. So that is the concept of Skyro twist and and you you had to introduce this product on a better price point without 
compromising quality without even sending message to to to, to market that yeah. this is a lesser product mm. what what do you want to do in terms of pricing you need to look at the economy that's number one mm. um, people are very price sensitive and when they buy products such as ours they compare it mm. with a two liter what can i get or can i get a two rand extra and use it for a taxi fare yeah then you then say is it possible that a product will be so accelerated to 14.99 17.99 that you cannot find ingredients that are fine but at the right value and it's not necessarily that you cannot find the ingredients that are are affordable it's a question of they've mastered the art of being arrogant where they've said every year we're going to increase our pricing whether you like it or not we build a brand and we dominate the market and unfortunately Skyrule is here we are eating <laughs> Where? Their who, who, who's are the market eating their where market. are you selling and I'm, I'm yeah. asking for the for the viewer, not for me. I know yes. where to get it all the time. So the last time when I was with you, we yeah. were selling at Pick and Pay nationwide. We were selling at Twenty Two Hypers, just in Gauteng. So the, the 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 proposal for us was, you're going to have Twenty Two Hypers, and then prove yourself. Once you've done so well in the Hypers, we'll give you the whole pie. So we now have the tw the two hundred checkers in Gauteng. We're now wow, doing the free state man. and wow. um, yeah, we, we're doing the free state, all, all of the free states. And then we've just signed Macro, we've just signed OBC, we've just signed uh, KitKat, uh, we've just signed OK, Caltex, uh, we've just signed Food Zone. So our, our listing, it's almost of a high value mm. than the company itself because of we've now mastered the art of presenting our product very well and what what it is is it's, it's about people what i realized over the years was you can knock on the same door for the last two years but if you don't connect with people and somehow bring a connection between the product as well as the human being it doesn't matter how great your product is yeah. it's never yeah. gonna get in yeah that's where the bottom line who who Who's resonating to twist? Who who's that? Describe to me this client of yours. Yeah. So as a sky rule twist, a uh, personality will be somebody who's either living in, in, in Tembisa or Midrand, but they sort of like ending between your your three thousand right up until seven thousand. So we we're targeting a market of lower LSM three right up until Ten. Yeah. And the reason why we've done that, we wanted the person who's loyal LSM three to be able to afford the brand, but at the same time look cool. Yeah. You've seen a situation where you've got this very cheap product, you're very ashamed to even hold it. Then that's where the higher LSM kicks in. Yes. That you have bought in the, uh, the the cheaper affordable product, but at the same time, in terms of the look and feel, it looks cool. It looks cool, it looks and like I can relate with yes. it. But at the same time, I wanted to. Uh, um, knock at home where I sort of like educated at the same time to say um, we black people we are capable we can do this I mean we've done this out of no budget zero budget I know um, we <laughs> I had to sell my house uh, sold the car and because the question if you believe in it so much why wait for government funding mm. why wait for somebody to inject some money into the business you know i think the biggest mistake in my in my case was the financial controls which today if we have a different conversation about financial controls <laughs> i'll be i'll be screaming there let, right now let, let me tell you <laughs> if you have not had poor financial controls you probably yeah. would not be sitting here because i i tend to think that we all have to go through that it's, it's a rite of passage you know if you're gonna start a business you're gonna have to make some financial mistakes somewhere so that you, you will get better yeah. the, and the sooner you make them the better for me so that you don't mm. make them when this is worth 14 billion dollars mm. you'd rather make them when it's still worth fourteen thousand rand. correct yeah, i think it's much better then it is, it is much better but in this type of a business one has to be very alert in terms of the legal fees that you have to engage in monthly um for our business we have to have a watchdog that literally looks after our brand you know who's uh, copying our brand who is you, you know infringing with our trademark you have to have that particular department that's looking after your brand so that's a legal cost the moment anything goes wrong 
you have to go after somebody whether you are friendly with them or not you Doesn't have matter. to protect the brand and most entrepreneurs they don't invest on the legal part of the business they think i'm gonna be fine you, you're not gonna be fine <laughs> You're not gonna be fine. There's no such thing. I'm gonna be fine. <laughs> you're not gonna be fine. <laughs> Once you know the legal fees are piling up, you're not gonna be fine. You're gonna have to make those decisions whether you're gonna close the business or you know the simple carry on loose. You know. Let's go back to the product. Yeah. So we've got. I know we've got the red grape juice with blueberry flavor. Then you've yeah. got the apple juice with uh, peach flavor. Mm. Is there only two flavors out there? We've got four. So we've got um, the apple with a juice of peach. Yeah. We've got red grape with a juice of blueberry. And then we've got the other two new ones that are coming up next year, which is uh, white grape with a juice of lychee. Mm -hmm. And then you also have pear with a juice of lemon as well as ginger. And that is the one that is aiming at the mixing market. Yeah. Um, deliberately for those guys that love their whiskey, yeah. that enjoy their vodka. You can still use these ones. I was as about well. to say, I'm you know, sure, they're very especially friendly. the red one, I'm sure it's already playing in the, in the mixing oh, market. Oh, that one is a, it's a god in, yeah, in vodka. Yeah, I, I can imagine a few things <laughs> that go with it. It's, a, it's, it's god in vodka. So yeah. it works so well. Yeah. But we want to take a consumer into a journey and educate the consumer about the product as to say, look, if you twist me with this particular gin yeah. or with this particular whiskey, this is how I taste, you know? It's another dimension of our growth as a, as a company where we say we, we're introducing a range one, one step at a time. I mean, part of our, our new signing with Macro is to produce a 1.25. That happens automatically for all our range. Wow. So that has to happen because of Macro, that's their biggest that's their biggest market. That's their 1.25 market. So we're introducing that straight on. And would that then go to your typical retailers like, you know? They will. Yeah. They will. Yeah. They will be everywhere, but ultimately we'll launch it at Macro and then it will trickle down to your PNP and, mm -hmm. and your But I then well. start seeing it selling it at, selling it at the next door to my mother's house because at 1.25 is more accessible to that market. Yeah. yeah. Look, as, you, as we speak, um, Tembisa, where I'm from, is infested with my product. It was deliberate for me, for Tembisa to understand that this is a product that's from Tembisa. It's homegrown. That's homegrown. So we do a lot of activations there. If we cannot win at home, there's no point of us trying to conquer Soweto or Katlehong. We have to win there. And um, it might be a good thing or a bad thing um, in terms of seeing the product everywhere because you don't literally know who's literally um, manufacturing at the mm. back of the room or you know having the right one um, that's where the legal part pl plays in of course it's not a realistic thing to chase everyone but you must have some kind of a control where you look at it it's not literally drawing so much or causing a hole into your pocket and sometimes it's just you know, a legal letter is enough. You don't even have to do much. <laughs> I love those, by it. the way. Yeah, I mean, they're just amazing. <laughs> yeah. Did you, when you started this, yeah. did you, in your wildest dreams, think it would be at this point where you are now? Never, never. I'm, I'm a very simple guy. And um, one, one person last week just asked me, why are you always wearing black? And I said, um, it's a deliberate decision that I've made where I just felt that I've grown as a human being and I don't feel that clothes needs to make who I am. As an entrepreneur, when you get to a level where somebody now says, we have to feature you to be the best dress, that was alarming for me. Mm. That was a turning point. Mm. And I said, mm, that's not where I'm going. So therefore, how do I have an identity that is linked to me without you know, um, attracting other things? Um, just last week, I got a call from the premier's office and um, I was part of the, the team that selects the winners for the, the Premier's Excellence Awards that mm. are happening next year. And um, that's when it hit home, that realistically, I might undermine myself so much. Um, these are the awards that I won last year, but this year I'm involved in the judging selection. Um, it's only grace and God. Yeah, he is an award-winning yeah. entrepreneur. I mean, I could read all of these awards that is, but the love, the the one I, I love most, he achieved the Sadak Top 100 Young Leader 2018, 
SA Small Business Awards uh, Top 20 2018, Houghton Premier Service Awards Inclusive Economy Award 2019, Game Changer Awards 2019, CEO Today Global Awards Winner 2019, and lastly, Global Excellence Awards Winner 2019. Yeah. So you back up your story with work. You see, you see for me, it's, most of us talk, and these awards say, I know what I'm talking about. Because other people are seeing the ve they, they see that you know, correct. It's because it's the vote of other people. It's not and, you speaking about yourself. And the beauty for me is you don't you don't start a business having awards in your mind. It becomes a compliment and sort of like a validation of what you're doing, and uh, it just gives a pat on your back that your colleagues, your the people that you work with, you know, somebody's seeing. I mean, some of the awards that you you've been reading, um, they happen in Africa. We got a call. You know, you you get selected by the nation. You're not selected by a team. Yeah. You know, in a in, in a room where they decide. We are you already selling in the continent? You know, we are. We are selling in Botswana. We are selling in in Swaziland. We are selling in um, Lesotho. We finalizing Congo, wow. which I'm literally excited about wow yeah me so we we were eating this this big pie one one tree at a time what what's next i mean that's that's a, talking about the the the, the flavors yeah. but from a business point of view what's next that's that's a that's a that's a big that's a big question um just two weeks two weeks back i made a decision not to do speaking anymore because i i just felt that i need to stop and literally gather myself and find my what's next. And you're very right, as where West Spiral is right now, we can either say we're going to run a campaign where now we're accelerating it, it's at everybody's face, right? But in terms of what I do, I'm a creative, you know? We've reached the chef life. Mm. So it's about now getting the product into people's hands. And my what next, what's next? Um, I'm going to announce it um, <laughs> end of February. <laughs> okay. We'll call it but back it's, here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be very exciting. Yeah. My next chapter in life is going to be very, very exciting. Um, you would know that um, I work very closely with um, Zara and Nadia. And uh, those two ladies, since I've met them on that interview, yeah. We've um, actually formed a strong bond. It's amazing. We are together for the next, I don't know how many Maybe years. I they are know the value of Uzenzele and I am always, I'm on the back every week. I introduce somebody to them every day because yeah. I know what they can do. They are amazing. And I call them gladiators. Yeah, they're amazing. <laughs> Those two ladies are I call amazing. them gladiators and the value of what they can do, the value of um, the power that they bring in into the table. It's literally amazing. And what a twist to end this interview. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sky Rule Twist founder, maker. This is a great human being, a great friend now. I love the work that you do, mate. Thank Sammy. you so much. So I'm going to say this to you. It's, it's going to be so great to go out and buy this stuff. But most importantly, I'd, I'd like you to link your business to his business. You know, it's, we should not see ourselves as small people. True. You know, buying from a fridge is not enough. Link your business to Sky Rule Twist and find how the two businesses can grow together. Find him. And how do they find you? So we are available on our social media, yeah. which is Sky Rule Twist. Yeah. Uh, all of our social media is one Sky Rule Twist. Skyrule we don't twist. change it. Yeah. One word. Yes. You know, and then for myself, it's Semi Mahaulet. All of my platforms. Semi Mahaulet, my great guest tonight. Thank you so much, mate. And all Thank you so, so much for having me. Love your work. <laughs>